Hi everyone, welcome to the new pain zone. It's uh, slightly different than the old one, as some of you know I moved. This is my first time recording a uh, video in this human form since uh, quite a while, so I hope you'll all bear with me as uh, I had to figure out how to assemble my own like lights again before doing this, but uh, today I've got a topic for you that basically browsing them Twitters, losing bits of my soul every tweet I read. Uh, I thought about that uh, Steam Deck, which at first I thought that was really cool. But the more I thought about it, the more I was like, hey, wait a minute, a lot of this stuff doesn't seem like it's a very good idea. So I'm just gonna whoop out the note cards here real quick, and we're gonna go through a few of those ideas and explain why, like, maybe we should hold our horses on a handheld console that essentially costs about as much, if not more, than a high-end console or a entry-level gaming laptop. Well, let's talk about that thing I first mentioned a little while ago is the price point of the Steam Deck. Uh, from what I've seen, uh, the base price on this thing is $400 and the top tier one is going to set you back uh, $650. Remember when we all lost our mind about the PS3 being $599? Because I do. And uh, for the most part, like the base model, like it's okay. But then like the only thing you get that isn't a digital reward or extra storage space in the higher end models is you get a glossier screen, like a glare resistant screen. And looking at these price points, it's like, okay, I'm gonna get a fancy keyboard layout and like some Steam badges. All right. It seems like the big selling point here for the uh, various tiers of Steam Deck is storage space, which yes, well, NVMe storage space is nice. Like heck, you can put that on your PS5 now if you've managed to find a PS5. That also heavily implies that unlike its direct competitor, the Switch, we won't be able to just go and buy our own SD cards or whatever to pop them in. Hey everybody, editing Charles here. This is actually wrong. While I was looking for infographics to help show the comparison directly between the Steam Deck and the Switch, I saw that one of the infographics said, oh yeah, by the way, you can put an SD card inside the Steam Deck. I'm like, wait, what? I haven't seen that anywhere else. So I went back and checked and sure enough, in tiny writing below the spec sheet, like for the tiers of like what Steam Deck you get in lettering that is close to the same color as the background, they're like, oh yeah, by the way, if you really want, you can just put an SD SD card in it. It's like, oh, I wonder why they haven't said that anywhere else. And I got to thinking, you know, if your big selling point for higher end models is that uh, they give you a lot more high end storage space, maybe you don't want to be talking too loud about the fact that you can just go buy an SD card that'll get you about the same amount of space if you really wanted it. Uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to do my due diligence here, folks. The highest I've seen SD cards is I think I've seen a couple that are a terabyte and the big ones I see like that are like available off the shelf for 512 gigabytes. And that's reasonable for a console, like a handheld console because usually handheld games are gonna be smaller. But that's still, it's like that really bugs me that like, okay, so you're making it clear that we aren't allowed to fill around with this as we like. We have to go through you and exclusively you. This is giving me big like iPhone energy, like with a no, you may not play with it attitude. I keep on putting the microphone directly in front of my mouth and it blocks my face and I don't like doing this. I'd rather have it here, but then I look slightly to the side and I just don't know because that also makes me look directly into that light that's right there. And I don't know what I'm doing here, but please bear with me while we figure it out. But a comparison for this is, uh, $400, that's gonna get you uh, an Xbox Series S or a PS5 if you could hypothetically find one. And the higher ends, like the Xbox Series S that like you can shoot the little ping pong ball up in the air with, like I saw on Twitter, or like the PS5 that gives you a disc drive because that is considered a luxury now in today's you own nothing environment. Those all cost about, uh, let me check my notes here. Uh, did I not write it down? No, those are about $500. Whereas if you want a top tier Steam Deck, which essentially gives you the privilege of, oh, you get a bit more uh, storage space than this, $650. So Steam Decks are already 150, like they're almost at scalper levels of prices as a base price. And now let's compare it to its direct competitor, the Nintendo Switch. Those cost $300. They are a whole ass $100 cheaper than the Steam Deck. And uh, I don't know how they're gonna compete with that, like for things we're going to uh, get into in a bit. And I will admit, I am a Switch owner. 
Uh, I like it. I wish I'd played it more than I did. It's essentially a road trip console for me, or like when I'm on a flight, back when flights were a thing people did. Please get the vaccine and wear your mask until we've got this sorted. I'd like to return to normal life, but idiots keep on making this thing worse! So also looking at the accessories, which by the way, you have to pay for the dock, the Steam Deck with its dock and the fact that its screen size is slightly larger than a Nintendo Switch is and has a slightly higher resolution than that of a Nintendo Switch makes this thing scream, we want this to be a Switch killer. And let's look back at our history. When is any consumer product that has labeled itself as a blank killer actually killed the blank? All those games that tried to be WoW killers crashed and burned horribly. Uh, pretty much every media format, like, oh, this is gonna kill your thing. Uh, that's, uh, that never happened. Uh, the only thing I can think of is like how Netflix and streaming services have essentially killed cable, but they didn't set out to be like, oh, we're gonna kill cable. No, they, they just wanted to do a thing. And uh, personally, I think that's how you actually develop a new niche and eventually overcome your predecessor is you don't set out to destroy the predecessor, you set out to make as good as a product as you can. And unfortunately, it looks like the Steam Deck has set out to try and destroy its predecessor, which yeah, it's, uh, if you look at it on a spec sheet, the Steam Deck blows the switch out of the water like line by line, like, oh, it's got better processors. It's gonna have more storage. It's gonna have a slightly bigger screen and all this good stuff, except for one thing we'll get into in a sec. But then you realize like, especially on a handheld, I gotta be honest, like that don't matter much. Like if, as long as I can play it when I'm on a plane, or like, uh, I used to play my Switch when I'm waiting for encodes, but I actually, uh, I don't know if it'll show up on the green screen, but to my uh, left here, I recently got my hands on an old CRT TV so I can play my uh, PSX while I'm waiting for encodes to play. Me and PS1 Jen Hagrid are uh, catching up and it's, uh, it's beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. And also, uh, back to the price point thing, uh, the fact that on top of it being so much more pricey than the Switch, that you have to pay for a baseline feature of the Switch, like you have to buy a dock, which admittedly the dock is nice and when it'll let you uh, plug into just about any screen, but at the same time, it doesn't take too much work to make a Switch plug into just about any screen either. Like I think like the most you'll need is just like a adapter cable, like instead of HDMI to HDMI, you'll go like HDMI to uh, DisplayPort or something. And another, the two things that also that the Switch beats it out on are first, the weight. The Steam Deck weighs over twice what the Switch weighs. I, I don't know how big of a deal that's gonna be, but just uh, all I can think of is like, yeah, a pound and a half, two pounds, it doesn't seem like much on a stat sheet, but trust me, like I used to have one of those blue Yeti microphones that weighed about two pounds, Based on the size, that thing was like a boulder. Whereas this sucker right here, uh, AT2035 by Audio Technica, I think this is half a pound and I can easily move this around in my hand. It's great. And that's a big factor, but a bigger factor is the battery life. I'm sure as you've all seen on the various stat sheets that have uh, came out that uh, pound for pound, or I guess watt for watt, uh, the Nintendo Switch is rated at about six to 10 hours and the Steam Deck is rated for two to eight hours. Uh, one, why such a low end? Only two hours on the low end for intensive stuff, which again, we're PC gamers here. We like to crank our settings all the way up and get all the frames, but also it just doesn't come up to like what the Switch is innately able to do. And uh, that's a problem because where do you play a handheld? Play it when you're out and about, like when you're doing things, when you're like at the laundromat waiting for something to finish, like say when your apartment complex's laundry room blew out or you don't have a laundry room in your apartment complex and you're a big boy who doesn't live at mommy's with access to laundry, like that sort of thing. Out, like say when you're, uh, I don't know, waiting for a call or like maybe you're at a relative's house for a while and you've got some downtime. That's when you're playing a handheld is when you are uh, away from your main source of stuff. And historically, Nintendo has beaten like every competitor it's ever had in the handheld market. It beats Sega. It beat, I think Atari had a handheld for a while. It beat Sony two for two based on battery life because no one wants to have a handheld console, a portable console that only lasts a few hours. So if the two hours thing wasn't bad enough because they keep on showing all these high fidelity games with a lot of stuff going on that will likely take up a lot of the processing power and the fact that it does have this big meaty processor inside it means we'll likely be on the low end of that battery scale 
quite a bit, especially when playing the games we'd like to play on our Steam Deck. Except for one thing. They said that it gets that eight hours of battery life, that high end, when you're streaming. Hold the phone. Weren't we all just collectively clowning on Google Stadia for a streaming service? Didn't nobody buy an NVIDIA Shield for specifically that? Because like, we don't want to stream the games. And that just brings into another point. You know how we we're talking about how like, you want to play a handheld console like when you're on a bus ride, when you're on a plane, when you're away in a relative's house or in a place where like, you're not by all your stuff. Yeah, do you have good internet when you're on a plane? Does anyone remember how good internet on the planes were? Cause I do, it sucked. You could barely stream the stuff they had built in. And then like, obviously you're not gonna have Wi-Fi on a bus. And while I've looked over the specs a couple times and I admit I could be wrong about this and missed it, there's nowhere in the Steam Deck spec sheets that say that you could buy a SIM card for it and try to get a mobile data plan going. So why would we have a handheld? where its battery life is short when you're out and about, and the only time you get the long end of the battery life is when you're using the internet to stream the game instead of relying on processor power. Think about it. The only place where you're going to have internet reliable, secure enough, and strong enough to be live streaming a high fidelity game is when you're in your home. And what else do you have in your home? You have your PC, you have your consoles, you have a bunch of other things that negates the necessity of a handheld portable console. That just, it makes no sense. At least you'll have the dock for the Steam Deck. But then again, remember, it's like if you're streaming your Steam games, like I guess you've basically paid $650 for a Steam Link. Uh, congratulations. But it just makes no sense to have a handheld console whose battery life is only useful when you're streaming, which requires a ton of internet power that you won't likely have in a setting where you'd want to play a handheld console. I, am I wrong here? Am I speaking moon logic? I just, it looks cool. It's just the more I scrutinize this, the more impractical it gets. So essentially, they've built a $650 or $400 NVIDIA Shield, except I think even the NVIDIA Shield gave up on that whole idea of streaming games, or like it was just a really beefy handheld. And let's be honest about Valve. Valve does not have the best track record of supporting their hardware. Remember the Steam controller that like had like two or three games actually like supported actively and then everywhere else and just kind of was like whatever. Remember the Steam Link, which I bought, you know when I bought it? When Valve dumped them during a Steam sale and rather than pay nearly like $100, I think it was $75 to $100 for one of those, I paid a single dollar for that. You wanna know how many times I've used that? Zero. Wanna know why? Well, actually, while it's a cool idea in concept, unfortunately, the way you have to set it up, it'll only really be practical if your living situation was like your entertainment is set up in a very specific way. Hey everybody, real quick update to this. Actually, the day after I filmed this, I uh, decided to dig up my uh, Steam link and try to set it up and I got it working. And I have to admit for a situation like uh, say inviting people over for game night and you wanna play Jackbox, it works great. However, it's still me just thinking to myself, why am I hogging up the TV when I can just do this on the computer? And additionally, it still rings true that unless your like Wi-Fi is within five feet of the TV you want to use the Steam Link on, you're going to have to run wires either across your room or across your whole house because part of the reason why I never tried it until now is because, well, I never had a living situation where my Wi-Fi router could be placed within five feet of my TV, barring some serious furniture moving. I could see this being really nice, say if I had a wireless controller or even like if for some reason I wanted to play video games that are on my PC, but for some reason I can't be in the room my PC is running on, but Otherwise, it's just a really impractical toy that I guess is literally just a Jackbox party pack machine. Maybe the Steam Deck is the answer to, oh, now you can use this to like stream your games to your TV um, if you uh, also buy the extra peripheral, which they have not specified the price yet. And this thing is already weighing in at a minimum of $400. So I don't know what that's about. Aside from the Valve Index, which I guess is doing pretty good, um, Steam does not have a good track record of supporting stuff. Like aside from VR headsets, which they made one game for and assumed everyone else was gonna make games for it. Like uh, 
I admit I don't have a VR headset and I personally, even though I have the money to buy one, the more I look into them, the more it's like, I really don't want to spend at least three figures, possibly four on a toy that I'll play Half-Life Alex on and then maybe VR chat. Those, they spent all this R&D money making this bomb VR set with like sensors and stuff, but then they only made one game for it. And again, back to that idea of Valve doesn't really support its hardware. So how is this going to be a year down the line, two years down the line? How much are they willing to support? Like they named a few titles that will be readily available on the Steam Deck, but how will they support this in the long term? And given the history, I don't have high hopes that like they're going to keep on pushing for people to make Steam Deck compatible versions of their games. And while yes, it is supposed to be basically we're going to stream your PC games to your handheld or just let you download the games onto the handheld there's still a bit of porting that goes on there. Like, I don't know too much about game development, but I don't think it's a one-to-one -one translation between a handheld console and a computer. Even if the computer is running a very, or excuse me, even if the handheld is running a very computer-like OS. So as I strain my eyes to see how long we've been going here, uh, yeah, whatever, this is primarily a, bit, a vehicle to do Q&A. But my final thoughts on this is, uh, one, as always, I could be wrong on all of this. I could be completely wrong and this turns out to be the coolest thing ever and uh, everyone else has one, but I don't. But the more I look at this thing, the more I get the vibes that like the people that like to throw their money at stupid stuff will buy this and they'll brag about it on the various social medias for maybe a month or so, but then they'll forget about it. It'll go in some closet somewhere and they'll just not pick it up. This seems like a thing that people will spite buy because they hate Nintendo despite like not playing a Nintendo game in years. And other final thought, in before, oh, uh, you're just a Nintendo fanboy. I have to admit I'm very ambivalent about Nintendo. I, It's the only console I've bought in this generation of consoles just because like the offerings on PlayStation and Xbox for the last two generations just haven't grabbed me. And eventually all their games come to PC anyway. Whereas the one thing Nintendo has going for it is, um, hey, if I want to play Mario, Pokemon, or Zelda, I have to buy the Nintendo product. And that's, I guess, an inelastic good for me as a gamer. Uh, this gives me big reverse Ouya vibes where everyone's like, oh, that Ouya, that looks so cool. We'll be able to play Android games on a console. And then we finally get it. Oh, wait, we're playing Android games on a console. That's kind of lame. Where the Steam Deck is, oh, I check this out. It's a portable console that we can play all of our uh, computer games on. And then when we get like, oh, the portable console that lets us play games we already own on a computer. Why wouldn't we just play them on our computer? And additionally, it doesn't make it very practical to not play them on the computer because the battery life when we're not streaming is very weak. And when we do have good streaming capabilities because we're at home with our internet, we're in the same room as our computer. So it just doesn't make sense to have this. And lastly, one last end before, I would not be surprised if it comes out that at least several of the games that are being optimized for Steam Deck right now just so happen to be like reworks of Switch parts because the Nintendo Switch does have quite a few games meant for PC or starting on PC or primarily on PC, The Witcher 3, Doom Eternal, uh, Binding of Isaac, but that's an easy one, that eventually made their way onto Switch and they play just fine there. So if I was a developer needing to make a quick port of my game to a mobile console, oh wait, didn't we already do one of those? Let's see if we can't repurpose that. That's entirely reasonable. It'll be a little silly to find out that people are just repurposing the direct competitor of the Steam Deck's games for the Steam Deck. But hey, do what you gotta do, game devs. I know that time is precious and you can't just throw your lives into everything to uh, realize your art form. And that's about it. Uh, that was all my thoughts on the Steam Deck. This is just uh, making video hay for me. And also, I can finally get back to doing Patreon Q&As. So first, patron Q&A is uh, Palinus J asks, uh, how's a new place slash tour? Uh, the first part of that, new place is great. Central AC. Uh, this room is much smaller. You can't tell because we're just in a void right now. But I don't mind this room being smaller because I don't need a large room to record. Uh, but this makes our living room and bedroom much bigger. This apartment is about the same square footage as our old place, but um, it has a larger bedroom, larger living room, larger kitchen, owing to the fact that it doesn't have a hallway and the secondary bedroom is much smaller. Unfortunately, I can't give you a tour right now because like the house is half torn apart, especially my office right now. 
because I recently got this uh, CRT TV and I had to tear a bunch of things apart. And also we're in the process of like cleaning and moving everything around because uh, we're hosting game night in between uh, D&D sessions. But maybe one day we'll do a tour. Second question, uh, Kajard asked, how's vet school going? Well, my wife just started her second year of vet school. She seems to be doing okay. Uh, really mentally exhausted because they're having like an exam a week or exam every other week. But uh, by her own admissions and like from what I've surmised, she seems to be doing much better than uh, last year. It's also kind of like odd because even though like Delta variant is quite a thing in our neck of the woods, uh, they have insisted on going back to the in-person class model. Their, uh, their compromise is, hey, we aren't gonna be taking attendance. You don't have to worry about that. But also if something happens to recording, we're not gonna try and fix it. So you're on your own if you don't show up or if the live stream doesn't work, which especially for immunocompromised people is really crappy that they're doing. And personally, I think that maybe this semester they should have still been on a virtual learning model, but unfortunately they hold all the cards in this situation and this is their PR nightmare to have. Uh, Tem Hunter asks, what is the meaning of life? Okay, I, I thought about this one for 15 minutes and I've decided that uh, it's ultimately meaningless whether or not you have an afterlife or if there is an afterlife because life refers to our time on this corporeal plane or this plane of existence. So for that, given the fact that like in a hundred years after our death, no one is going to remember our names just because the passage of time is such a thing and so much happens so fast these days, especially in current times, there's no point in trying to build a huge legacy. So instead of doing all that, focus on experiencing joy and bringing joy to others and having as best of a time as you can on this world and just making sure that everyone around you is happy to have you around. Like be kind to others, experience joy. I, I hope you weren't expecting anything more extreme than that. Uh, I'm not gonna say the Hitchhiker's Guide reference because that's done to death. Finally, Joel E asks, how is the bird doing? Uh, this is a reference to the Discord. There was a bird hanging out on my uh, my deck and uh, we were worried something might've been like wrong with it because it was just standing there, just like randomly hanging out, not like nesting, not trying to eat. And we were worried. So we left it like a thing of raw oats and sugar water in case it was like unable to find food. And we kept on checking on it until like we went to bed and it was gone. So like, oh no, did it die? But it didn't die because like we didn't find a dead bird anywhere. And then we saw it later. It was hanging out on top of my neighbor's car and uh, it was just chilling like it was doing earlier. And I guess we figured out that the bird just like maybe it nests nearby or it was like prospecting for where to build a nest. And the bird's doing OK. I haven't seen the bird lately, but I have no reason to believe that the bird has met a bad fate. That's going to do it for uh, today. I hope you all enjoyed uh, being in the untextured void. I am going to modify my Patreon goals to where uh, if we hit an arbitrary amount of money that will pop up on the screen now, I will reinstall Counter-Strike Source. Uh, in the meantime, though, please uh, stay safe, uh, stay indoors, wear your sunscreen. Don't forget to wash your hands and wear your mask according to CDC guidelines when you are indoors. And uh, please enjoy this cat video. <laughs> Oh, Frisk, are you going to make the live action videos now? Could you at least get off my coat? Because uh, I really don't want that all messed up. Please? Give you a snack. Maybe he doesn't know that word. Snack. He can't be bothered. Can I can I have my jacket? I should have left it there. I'm just gonna, um, just gonna. Please, please don't fall and claw the jacket. I'm I'm just gonna. I'm just. Oh, there, I saw the claws dig into that. Come on, Frisk. I'll let you play the PlayStation. You're not interested in that, are you? <laughs>